Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again being here. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning, and that is it. So good guys, I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee. Today we're gonna to be talking about Starlink and how to make a mesh network using the Starlink internet service. And people have been asking me to do a video about this for some time. And I said, you know what? We're gonna take the plunge. We're gonna pick up a whole bunch of product, put it all together, build this network, and now you will be able to do the exact same thing. So the question is, why in the first place would you even want a mesh network? I'm gonna get into that in just a second. Before I do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jcristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash books. So my goal here was to use the SpaceX Starlink service and create this mesh network out of it. Now, my use case was for indoor as well as outdoor. So we ended up going with some external APs or access points. And I'll get into that in just a second. Now, some people will say, why get a mesh network when you could just use a whole bunch of routers set into access point mode, let's say, and then set all of their SSIDs the same and their passwords the same. So when you move from area to area of the house or whatnot, it will just constantly follow you, so to speak. That's okay, but what ends up happening is you end up with downtime. Why is that? Well, if I have a router here and a router there. When I move into the middle and this router is still covering me, okay, I'm still connected to this one. But as I get further and further away from it, the signal will get worse and worse and worse as I get closer to this one and away from the first one. But once I get over here and the signal finally drops off, all of this time I'm getting worse and worse data, slower speeds, unreliability, but then once it does drop off, your iPad or your phone or whatever the system is will then pick up to the closest one. Once again, it has the same SSID as well as password, so it'll be able to pick up. The problem is, is that point in between. You're constantly getting worse and worse and worse as you're getting further away from the original one until eventually it drops off completely. This is not what you want. And a mesh network fixes this. Also, a mesh network is self-healing. What does that mean? Basically, if you have, let's say, five nodes or five access points and one of them goes bad, there's a problem with it, what happens is, is the mesh network then reroutes the data through the other four and just pulls that one out of the loop. A perfect example of this is, let's say you have a large property and on this property, you have those five APs or five access points and one of those access points uses the sun. So it's capturing solar rays to charge up a battery and that battery is what is powering that access point. Well, you have two or three days of cloudy weather. Now that access point goes dead. That's okay. With a mesh network, it just pulls it out of the mesh and now just continues along its merry way and constantly pings that AP until it turns back on. Once it turns back on, once again, it's auto healing. It puts it back into that mesh network and now you have five instead of four access points. Self-healing, very, very powerful. Also, it provides a direct path, which is fantastic. So what happens is no matter where you are on the property, it finds the best way to get your data from you back to the router. It doesn't matter which way it goes. Once again, it knows where all the nodes are or where all the APs are, and it knows where you are. So it finds the best or lowest latency out of all of them. And that's the path it takes the path of least resistance, I guess you would call it. So mesh networks are very powerful. There's a lot of them out there. You have like Google Nest, that is really big right now. You have Netgear's Orbi, I believe it's called. You have Linksys, VLOP, as well as Asus has their Zen Wi-Fi, which is really big. You have Aero, you have a lot of different ones. Ubiquity has a big one, but a lot of these are very, very expensive. So what I ended up doing is I ended up going with TP-Link, not because it is the best out there, it's good, but not because it's the best, but because it's the most affordable and everyone watching will be able to afford to be able to build this with me. I mean, when you look back here, this is some of the gear. This is actually the gear that I use to build the network. And it looks like a TP-Link sponsored type of video. It's not, 
It would be nice. I bought all this. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go through some of the things and give you an understanding of what each thing does. And then we're going to go and build this network together and you can follow along. And by the time we're done or the time you're done watching this video, you're going to have your own mesh network put together or at least the understanding on how to do it. And then you be the judge. You decide if you want it or not. Would it work out for what you are doing? So some folks are going to ask, did you take the Starlink router out of the mix? I could have, but I didn't. The reason I didn't is because the mesh network that I'm building is going to be for outside as well as inside, but inside the studio itself, the router that comes with Starlink is good enough. It's very powerful. It is a Wi-Fi 6 router. It's very quick. I would have to say that if you do not need any other functionality that you do not get with the Starlink router because it is so basic, buy a router to use, but make sure it is a really good router. It's going to cost you 150, 250 bucks. Now, if you want me to make another video where I take the Starlink router out of the mix completely and maybe use this one, this Archer 7 that I picked up, very low cost, but still pretty good. I can do that also. Now, what I did include in this build is a managed switch. Even though it is low cost, it is very powerful. So all of the data that comes out of the Starlink router goes into the managed switch first before it goes anywhere. That gives me complete control over what's going on. You have eight ports on that switch and I can assign each port with different data structures. I can say that port one gets the maximum amount of the data capacity, the max amount of everything. And then all the way down to port eight could possibly get the least amount of priority to the data that is available. So for example, you can use port eight for a TV or something that you don't care if it's spools a little bit. It's not that important. But port one is very important because maybe that's what you're using for your internet connection for your business. That's a possibility. Maybe you're on a Zoom conversation, a Zoom call, and you don't want your kid that's playing Fortnite to crush your system. And now all of a sudden you don't have any data and uh, you're looking like Minecraft. And people are like, what the hell's wrong with Joe? What's wrong with his connection? My kid is killing people. So we don't want that to happen. So we put a managed switch into the mix. So once again, that managed switch does a lot. You're, there is so much functionality. I could do a whole nother video just on the managed switch itself. I'm not until you ask me for it though. There's a lot that goes into it, but there's a ton that you can do with it. So let's take a look at some of these products. Number one, we have this right here. This is an exterior or an outdoor access point. It is gigabit. It is the EAP 225s. Let me not show my eyes so the camera could focus in on this. How's that? Can you see that? Pretty good. Anyways, we got two of these. These are once again, AC 1200s. They're wireless MIMO gigabit indoor outdoor access points. Next, we have a five port gigabit switch. Now this switch is unmanaged. This is basically to allow me to have more internal inside of the studio routes coming out of the managed switch. This gives me more ports. The managed switch has eight ports. This has another five. So what happens is, is if I have something that's, let's say very important, but not as important as port one. So maybe it's port two or port three. I can take port three, for example, and put it into here. And now all those connections coming out of this is going to have the same type of priority as port three would on the managed switch. So these are very, very good. Next, we have the Armada. This is a hardware controller. This is the OC200. Um, they have an OC300 also. This is the heart and soul of your mesh network. Everything goes through this. This is what decides what is going on, who does what, which access point has what control over which, which one is the main access point, all of that healing that we were talking about, this controls everything. So that is your hardware controller. They do have a software controller, but honestly, buy a hardware controller. Anytime that you can take software out of the mix, just do that. It just makes a lot more sense. The same thing with your audio. A lot of people record their audio on their computer and then later on they're like, there was a glitch, there was some update, it sounds like crap, whatever. 
just get like a Zoom or something and record your audio into that. It's external. You're never going to have a problem. Anyways, I digress. Now, next we have that gigabit smart switch like I was telling you about before. This smart switch right here is what gives us the ability to have complete control over who gets what and how much of what. What data goes where and once again, how much of that data goes where. So your kid doesn't crush your system like Call of Duty or Fortnite or something like that. Anyways, this is our managed switch. I would recommend these highly. Highly. There's so much that you can do with them, like I said, but you can set it up so it's very, very basic. Right now in the studio, I have it set up very, very basic right across the eight ports. Like I said, port one has maximum priority all the way back down to port eight, which has the least priority. Simple, super simple. And then finally, we have this, which we are not going to use. This is that Archer uh, 7. I can configure this if you want me to. It is a very cheap, basic router, but it gives us the ability to set up it as an access point. There's a lot of things that we can do with it for a cheap cost. Um, but, but like I said before, if you want to take the Starlink router out of the mix, do not get this. It's okay. It works. And it can do everything that I need it to do. But if you need to get a little bit deeper into things or you need to get at maximum speed Wi-Fi or whatnot, that's not going to be your bag. You're going to want to spend 150, 250 bucks on a really good Wi-Fi 6 router. So once again, that's why I'm not getting into that right now. If you want me to make a video on that, I can do that. So what are we trying to accomplish here? Ultra high speed access inside ultra high speed access outside through Starlink. Also the ability to have an access point anywhere available anytime, no matter on your property, or maybe if you're in an office, maybe out in the field out in the back or possibly in the parking lot in the front, maybe you have cameras all over. Okay. Also to provide Wi-Fi for your home automation, for example, home automation is really big these days and Wi-Fi cameras are really big also. So being able to have that Wi-Fi mesh covering your entire property or your business is very important. That's what we're trying to do here. And once again, do it affordably. So all of the hardware that we're using for this build, I'm going to put in the description as well as in the pinned comments. You'll have a direct link. It'll be my Amazon page. Go check that out if you want to pick up any of these products. So once again, this is not sponsored by TP-Link. Only me. I'm doing the work. <laughs> so let's get into it. I'm going to show you my setup and then we're going to do the back end build of it on the computer. Let's go. All right, guys, I'm getting distracted. Do you love, do you love, there's my favorite. There she is. <laughs> I talked about that in my last video. It is the Minolta SRT-102. Even though we have a ton of other stuff in here, that is still, still my favorite. Anyways, sidetrack. Um, so let me climb up here so you can see what we have going on. Now, it looks like a whole bunch of a mess but it's very simple. I'm going to tell you what everything here is doing. Nothing is set up right now. It's all reset factory settings. That is it. This right here is the managed switch. Like I was telling you about this right here is the AP. This is one of the EAP 225s. This is another 225. Right here, of course, we have our Starlink router and below that, this right here is very, very important and mission critical. If you do not pick this up and you do have a Gen 2, you are not going to be able to do any of this. You need to have this Ethernet adapter. Now, if you have a Gen 1 Starlink, then you don't need this at all. We have two PoE injectors here. And finally, most importantly, the heart of the entire network, your Amata controller. Once again, the heart, the brains of the whole thing. This is very, very simple. What we're doing is we're taking the connection that's coming out of the Starlink, which is here, then passing that and feeding it into the managed server. Just like I told you, nothing gets any data until this managed server says, 
it can have the data. Now the blue cable that's coming out of our controller is going right into the LAN port of this specific injector, this PoE injector. This one you see has the two cables connected to it. One is LAN and one is PoE. PoE is basically the power and the power comes from here into this unit here. Now this unit is going to be our main unit. Why is that? Because we're pushing data into it. You can see both ports are filled. Whereas this unit will be a secondary unit that will get the data sent from this one through the air Wi-Fi into this one. And as you can see, there's only one cable in it. This cable is giving it power and that is it. It is the PoE injector, power over ethernet. And this is it. There's nothing more to it. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put a little diagram together and I'll put it up on the screen so that you can see it a little bit better. Once again, to review, the data coming out of the Starlink goes directly into this network adapter. The network adapter feeds the data into port one, which is the highest priority, port one of our managed server. The data goes out port three and into the data port of our command center here. From there, it goes out the blue cable into the primary access point. As we can see here, it's plugged into the LAN port. The PoE port is only for power. It goes into this device. Why is that? Because this is our primary AP. This is our primary access point. This is our secondary. The secondary only has one wire coming into it, and that wire is to power the unit. And that is it, guys. Once again, very, very simple. Let's get on the computer real quick and we'll go through the actual software setup and then we'll hang these outside and we'll do some tests, some speed tests at different distances to see how they work. All right, so let's get started setting this up. So the software is called Amada. So let me go ahead and open that real quick. This is what it looks like. And obviously we're showing that there is no controller set up. That's fine. We're going to set that up now. To start out with, you want to make sure that you're on the Wi-Fi network that you are working on. If not, you're not going to be able to see the controller that's plugged in over there. So on the software itself, we're going to hit the plus button at the very top. And it says, make sure that the LED on the hardware controller is flashing slowly. And it is. Basically, it's waiting to be paired, let's call it. So we hit next. It says, Armada would like to access your camera. Go right ahead. Hit OK. Now, what it wants to do is to scan the back of the unit. Success, perfect. Your hardware controller has been added. Thank you so much. So now when we look at this, we can see the hardware controller. We can see the IP address, which is 192.168.1.153. And we could also see the firmware update. Later on, we might want to take a look at the firmware and upgrade it to the latest and greatest. But for now, we're just going to do the build. If we click on the controller, it will now do a connection to that controller and we're going to be able to make modifications to it. What we need to do is connect the AP devices, those access points, the main one and then the secondary. It says, welcome to Armada controller. Let's get started. Let's do it. So it's asking for a name of this Armada controller. It just gives us this generic name. I'm going to rename it to Armada controller Starlink. How about that? That works. And then as far as the region goes, it's US. Then it's asking me for the time zone. So instead of finding Florida or New York or Miami or something, it has Eastern time. We know that it is UTC negative five. So let's go ahead and click that, hit done. And now it's asking me, what is the scenario? What are we using this for? And this will give it a baseline or a profile on how to set this up as a hotel, a restaurant, a shopping mall. It gets an idea of what you're going to be using it for. I'm just going to leave it as hotel for right now, but we can make manual changes after the fact. It doesn't matter. Let's hit next. Now it says, configure devices. Now this first device is the main device that it's seeing. Remember, this is the device that has the data in it. The one that's on the left hand side. Remember the one that has the two cables in it, the POE, which gives it the power. Once again, POE stands for power over ethernet as well as the data cable. So that's this one. We're going to go ahead and click on that, select it and hit next. Now it's asking for an SSID. 
What do we want to call this network? Now remember, the SSID is going to remain the same. It doesn't matter if you connect to the main one or a secondary or maybe the tenth down the row. It doesn't make a difference. It's all one mesh network. So the SSID, I'm going to call it Starlink Mesh. Then we're going to select a password. And then finally, do we want there to be any type of guest access to our access points? And I'm going to leave that off. I don't want anyone just to stroll around and just jump onto our Wi-Fi just because we're nice. But if you were in, for example, a hotel environment, then yes, you might have a mesh network specifically for guests. And then you might have a mesh network specifically for upper end top tier. Now we're going to hit next again. And here it asks for an administrative account. This is where we're going to be able to control it. So I'm going to enter in my information. I'm going to do e Christina. That would be me. The email address, which is optional. I'm going to put it in anyways. Finally, a password. And then we hit next. We hit done. It now builds the structure. And in just a moment, we'll now have access to the primary AP or access point, which we do. So now here on the screen, we can see that it has one site, zero devices, two admins and zero alerts. If we go to devices at the bottom, we can see that we have this one device. It hasn't been provisioned yet. It says provisioning. What that means that it is bringing it on into the mesh. Now we can see that the primary one says connected, but it has found a secondary one, the one that we had to the right. That one says pending. What we need to do is bring that into the Wi-Fi mesh network. So if we select that, we can click on adopt. So let's go ahead and do that. And it says adopting. As soon as it adopts that new access point, it brings it into the mesh. And now we have two mesh points that once again, we can put anywhere on the property. Now, as you can see, it says adopting still, but it is now given that access point its own IP address. So the new secondary IP address is that 192.168.1.205, whereas the primary access point is 203. So what it does is it picks IP addresses. So each specific access point has its own IP address and that's it. It says connected. So now we have the primary connected and the secondary connected. Now, if we go onto the computer and connect to it, we'll see what ends up happening here. Right now I'm connected to Bevel. Bevel is my Starlink router itself. But what we can see is we now have Starlink mesh also available to us. So if I click on that, I'm going to take connect automatically off and I'm going to click connect. And now it's asking me for the password. The password that we entered in is what we're going to enter now. We hit next. It says, do you want to allow your PC to be discoverable by PCs and other devices on this network? Yes or no. We're going to hit yes for now. We can always change this later. Now let's go ahead and open up a web browser to see if our internet is actually working. Starlink.com. And there you go. It is working. No problem. It looks like it's pretty quick. So now let me go ahead and open up our software to do our speed tests. We're going to also use speedtest.net, but we're going to use the software on the phone itself. So we're getting approximately 90 down. And as we can see here, just about 16 up. Not bad. So this is going to be our baseline, 90 down, 16 up. And what we're going to do is we're going to start walking across the field and see how far away we can get and what kind of speeds are we going to get also. So what we need to do now is take those access points and now move them outside to where they're going to be located. We'll do that real quick. And then after that, we're going to take a long walk off a short bridge to see how far away we can get and still have a good or good enough signal. I'm going to get into some speeds too when we're done with this, but let's go ahead and move those access points outside. So this one right here is our primary access point because this is the one that's getting the data. So this is the one that we want to put right outside of the building here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this cable that's plugged into this primary one which goes right to here. I'm going to disconnect this and the cable that is actually that leads outside, which is this one right here. I'm going to connect that. So 
we can take this and move it outside and we'll be connected properly. All right, so now that we have this one connected, we're gonna to go to the other building and connect this one. This is the secondary unit to the other building so that we have this mesh network. Now this is about, well, I'd say about 40 feet away from the other one, but it is line of sight, so it is close enough. We're gonna put that one right here on the wall. So that's all we have to do is grab our cable once again this is poe so this is where our power goes right into it we plug it right into the bottom and that's it this is done look at the side of it and we can see that we have a green light that means we are getting power that's perfect done this comes in and lowers like that and that's it super simple so now guys, we're gonna go ahead and walk all the way back to where we started. And I'm gonna try walking as far as I can go and see how far we can get out on this property without losing the signal. Let's go ahead and try this again. We are at the Blackburn Technology server. Let me hit go. There we go. Let's see what we get. Not bad, we have 63 down. And let's call it 15 up. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk and I'll just keep stopping along the way and doing tests. So all right guys, this is about 30 feet maybe. I'll call this about 40, somewhere around there. Let's go ahead and do another test. This speed is definitely slower than before. The download speed on this one, we see 29 with an upload speed the same at 14. I think last time it was at 15. So let's go forward some more. I would say we're probably, I'd say a good 75 feet away at this point, maybe getting close to 100. And this time only six up. I'm going to keep on going further. I'm going to see how far we can push this thing. All right, let's give it another test. Still acceptable, we're at 40. There you go, 23.6. And we're now, I would say a good 200 feet, I would imagine. I'm gonna keep on going. This property is approximately 300, I think, 340 wide or so. Let's go all the way to the edge of the property. So we are now as far as we can go on the property. This is it. Um, let's not get bit by any snakes or anything. This is out here. This is every bit of 300 feet at this point. A good football field away. So we got 21 down. And once again, we can see how that up speed is what is suffering the most, but it's still acceptable. So just to give you perspective, before getting Starlink, our internet was through AT&T U-verse and it was 15 megs down and 1.5 megs up and as you can see here I'm at 300 at least 300 feet probably more like 325 feet away from that access point and we're getting 21 down and 7.5 up all right so we did all of our testing and I just wanted to let you know about this OC200 to OC300. The OC200 that we currently are using has an ethernet connection of 100 base. Basically it's a 100 meg connection in comparison to the gigabit version, which is that OC300. So the reason why we're getting speeds that we're getting when, even when we're this close, the AP unit is right here. I'll do a test while we're this close, just while we're talking, just to get the numbers here. 
So we got 67.4 as far as the down speed. We'll take a look and see what the up speed is. But once again, this is a 100 meg connection compared to a gigabit connection. What I'm going to do now, as soon as this is done, I'm going to show you the difference. And this might be important for some of you. Some of you might not matter one way or another. So we ended up with 67.4 by 11.7. Fine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to bevel, right? That's what I call my Starlink router. And I'm going to do the exact same speed test. So right now we're currently on the Starlink mesh. I'm going to switch over to bevel and we are connected and bevel is right across this hard concrete wall. So we're going to get a strong connection, even though we are going through concrete, it might be a little bit slower, but not by much. It's still extremely strong. We're going to go and use the exact same server and we're going to hit test again. I hit go. Let's see what we end up getting here. As far as the ping, we have 25 millisecond ping, which is not bad. We see 80, 90, 100. We're at 200, 230, 220, 207. We hit 206 on the down speed. That is exceptional, exceptional. There you go. That's 15.8 megabits. So let's call it 16. So that's it guys. Pretty easy, right? Step by step, little by little. This doesn't take a lot to do. I showed you where all the wires go, how to configure it through your phone. Very, very simple. Once you have it built, it's a set it and forget it. Once again, this is a healing network. If one of these APs go down, it's okay. As soon as it comes back up, it will immediately find its way back into your mesh network. That is awesome. Also, like I said, if you need gigabit instead of the 100 base because you want faster speeds outside, then using the OC300 instead of the 200 would be what you're looking for. I'll put once again links to all of this stuff in the description below as well as the pinned comment. So if there's something that you want, you can go and pick it up through it. I would appreciate it. Once again, this was not sponsored by TP-Link. I bought all of this stuff with my own money because a lot of you guys have been asking me to do this and now I have. So if you have any questions about how I put something together or if something was a little bit vague and you want a little bit more information, let me know in the comment area below this video, put your thoughts, put your suggestions, anything that you would like to know or any questions that you have. If I can't answer it, I'm sure there's someone smarter than me in the comment area that will be able to answer your questions for you. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, please throw it a thumbs up. That would be greatly greatly appreciated and share it with your community. Share it with anyone that has Starlink or that wants Starlink, anyone that needs a mesh network. Even if they're not using Starlink, everything that I just did is basically a configuration of that TP-Link mesh network indoor outdoor network so you can use this video you can give this video a link to this video to anyone that wants to put together that mesh network and they should be able to do it so once again share it with your friends family reddit a starlink community over on facebook or whatever share the link i would really appreciate it and if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet please do so and click this little bell icon over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, all Starlink coverage that I do on this channel. Remember, this channel is all about photo, video, and tech. Starlink stuff will be tech. All of the Starlink stuff will be in a Starlink playlist. So if you just are here for Starlink, go to that playlist. If you're just here for photo, don't look at that playlist. I'm trying to segregate things off so the people that are here, they get exactly what they want. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope once again you enjoyed this. We will see you in the next one. Many blessings to you and your family. Take care. Love you all. We'll see you in the next one.